What's going on, rock stars? Welcome in to the 1% Life Show. I'm going to be sharing some things with you today. I can't wait because I forgot yesterday. And as you come in here, we're going to be talking today about some crazy stuff. Let me just tell you, before we get started, I'm a little nervous. That's right. You probably don't ever hear me say that. And I'm telling you I'm nervous because, are we live? There we go. I think we are. Somebody let me know. So, I'm a little nervous because of this. I don't know what's going to come out on here. And um, you know when you're like kind of in something, right? Like you're in something and you maybe you're working through something and you keep that thing kind of close to the heart, like just maybe a couple people. Yeah, well, that's where I'm at right now. And I had this thought to hold back and wait. And I realized that I would not only be doing you a disservice, I would be doing me a disservice to not come out with this and to not speak about this right now. Because one of the things that you're going to learn, if you don't already know this about change and transformation as you become this new version of you, right? We're letting go and shedding the past and bringing out this new you. And as you begin to do that during, man, what a perfect time, what better time than now, would you agree? As you begin to do that, you're going to realize that with transformation and change, you also need to begin to install or instill new behavior, right? And one of the best ways to do that is to talk about it to talk about the shift, to talk about the change, and to get it out there. Because then there's no secret, right? There's no secret and it is who you are and you begin to accept this new identity. So Rockstar, if I have not yet introduced myself to you, my apologies, let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, hey, for those of you who don't know me, if you're listening on the Facebooks, let's make sure that we are live here. If uh, <laughs> Sometimes I swear it just doesn't tell me, it doesn't tell me. So um, if you were watching here on the Facebooks, my name is Joni Dillon, peak performance coach and trainer, host of the 1% Life show and the 1% Life podcast. And there we are, there we are, here you guys are. Okay, so and, and um, if you're listening to us on the podcast, whatever channel or station or whatever you call it, from iHeartRadio to iTunes to Google Play to Stitcher, whatever it is, thank you for being here and thank you for being a loyal listener. If it's your first time listening to the show, please leave us a review. Let us know how you enjoyed it. And please, please, please share this out. This is how we grow. This is how we're able to continue to put out content for you is by you sharing it with other people. So I just want to thank you for that amazing gesture in advance. And I'm nervous, so I'm going to, I like to call it excited energy because there's this feeling about the word nervous that's kind of, I don't know, yucky <laughs> to me personally. I don't like it. And maybe you feel the same. So what I've started to do was to replace the word nervous with the word excited. Because if you think about it, the word excited and the word nervous have very similar, if not identical, physiological symptoms that arise in the body, right? Your heart starts beating when you're excited as it does when you're nervous. And, you know, maybe you get sweaty palms or arms, like whatever the thing is for you, you're, um, you know, you're in a different state right one of excitement so that's what we're going to call it today so thanks for being here with me tag somebody who should be here right now and um let's get into this so rock stars um hi everyone who's here hey mario hey jackie hey rock stars thanks for your support here in this and uh for those of you catching it live so listen um 
this is why you're here right now. This is an interesting show topic. How to use your subconscious mind to get out of overwhelm, release your identity of the past, own your power, and not give a you know what. That's right. That's what we're talking about today. It's a whole lot of a lot. And it all comes back to one thing, and that is really beginning to build a relationship with your subconscious mind. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know for for the last five years that I've been publicly doing transformation work and taking people from the verge of termination to the top 1% and helping 1%ers increase their efficiencies, double their income, and gosh, enjoy life more because that's what life's about. I work with the subconscious mind and you know that. And what you're also learning is how you can begin to use your own subconscious mind for you. And that's the key here because when you begin to do that, uh, you will watch your life change. Oh, the sweaty palms are having it. Oh my goodness. You will watch your life change in magical ways. So Rockstar, if you know there are things from your past that are keeping you from living your best life now, because you metaphorically keep bringing them with you, then today's episode is for you. Okay, Rockstar, and if maybe, maybe you've been holding on to some sort of identity of the past. It could be an identity from your younger years, maybe one of your past professions, something that someone gave you, an identity that someone gave you when you were younger. Doesn't matter how young. And it may just be time to let that identity of the past go. And if you feel that somewhere in you, maybe not consciously, but unconsciously, then today's episode is for you. Or perhaps you've just been feeling a little out of control when it comes to life period right now. Maybe you're spinning a lot of plates and you feel like you're going into the big, oh, yep, overwhelm. <laughs> if so, any of those scenarios, this episode is for you. So welcome into the 1% Life Show. And if I, again, if I haven't introduced myself yet, I probably already did because you know I'm that big uh, excited today, but I'm just gonna do it again because why not? So my name is Joni Dillon, peak performance coach and trainer and host of the 1% Life Show and podcast for those of you who are just joining us. And I'm just gonna tell you again that it could get really raw really fast. Um, and it could also not. So if, if there's one thing that you guys know about me, <laughs> It's that if something's on my heart and I feel guided and led to share, I will, and I, I will, as uncomfortable as it feels. I have a feeling that I'm feeling this way for a reason, because it might just come out, right? So here we go. Um, in order to talk to you about this you know, awesome full topic of how to use your subconscious mind to get out of overwhelm, release your identity of the past, own your power, and not give a, you know what, I have to start by telling you a little bit about me and what led me to where I am right now here with you, okay? And then of course, how it applies to you. So one of the things that you most likely don't know about me, unless you're in my inner circle, is that freedom, freedom, that big word, is my number one core value. It drives me. It drives everything in my life. It drives my business. It drives my, drove my sales performance when I sold timeshare sales. It helped. It made me number one over and over and over again. It gave me that, that competitive drive to just be my best self. Maybe you can relate in your own way. And freedom also drives me to create my 1% life today. And I feel like we don't ever get there. That's one thing I do want to clarify momentarily, if I could, when it comes to creating your 1% life. And that's, do we ever get there? Were you just done? I don't know. For me personally, I will always be on that journey. I will always be on that quest. I will always be bettering my version of my 1% life. And perhaps you can relate to that. So going back to my core value of freedom, being my number one core value. That means that everything that I do, my time for the most part, my time, 
my energy, my hard-earned money, my mental power, all of that really revolves around this concept of creating freedom in my life. And if it doesn't, for some reason, what happens, or what I think is creating freedom in my life, okay? Let me just say that. And if it doesn't, what happens is that there's a collision. There's a collision that occurs, right? Internally, <laughs> of course. And where I think I may be going towards freedom, I may actually be like self-sabotaging and going away from freedom. My version or my vision of what freedom is to me. But because my conscious mind, that part of me that, you know, has conscious desires, goals, intentions, dreams, all of that, well, it's not always aligned with my unconscious mind, which is that part of me that actually goes out and achieves the thing that I truly desire. And so while my unconscious mind is really there to protect me and yours is there to protect you, it often, it can sometimes, you know, think that it's doing the right thing, but uh, in reality, it may be doing the right thing in its mind. However, is it the right thing for me, okay? And is it in alignment with my goals? and my vision of my future. And so I want you to think about how this specifically applies to you. What do you believe your core driver in your life is that number one thing for you? And maybe you wanna share it or say it out loud. What is that core driver for you? That, that thing that everything that you do, your time, your energy, your money circles around. For me, it's, it's freedom, okay? And one of the things that I, consciously have always gotten. I shouldn't say have always, because that's not true. Uh, since I've been an entrepreneur in my latter years, so the last five years, I have consciously gotten, right? You get a concept, but it's one thing to really understand a concept at a deep level, right? Where you actually practice it, <laughs> makes sense. And so I consciously understood the concept of what I'm gonna to say to you right now that some of you are really gonna resonate with and others may not quite get, because, and that's okay, and, and it's okay. I didn't get it for years and years and years at the level that I needed to get it at until today. And that is that structure creates freedom. Hear me again, structure creates freedom. And I used to hear this over and over and over again from one of my mentors, uh, Lisa Sasevich, who would talk about this years ago. And, uh, you know, it, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we got to put systems in our business. We have to create structures. We have to do all the things. Sure, that makes sense. But, but guess what I did? Reject, reject, rejected it, rejected it, rejected it, rejected it. Anything that had to, do, had to do with structure in my life for the most part, right? Like really, anything that had to do with rules, because then that would be robbing me away from my freedom if you forced me to obey a particular rule. It caused me to leave a job, a really wonderful career, which I'm actually happy that I did, but because I felt like, like my freedom, my freedom was being taken from me and I was being confined. It is what it is. We all have our opinions, right? And for me, it was the best move at the time. And so when I started to conceptually get that structure creates freedom. That's when I started going out and doing things like hiring team to, to compensate for the things that I lack, right? I, you all know I'm great at a few things and I'm really not good at many things. Right? Like, if you don't know, I'll tell you, I'm really not good at a lot of things. And one of those things that you know I'm just not good at, again, is um, I can work a spreadsheet. I mean, I have a master's in business, but I don't really love that stuff. I don't like it. I, it makes me kind of cringe, right? I don't really love it, um, but I want other people to have it for me. So I started going out and hiring a team. And, um, and so that was great, right? That was good. And yet I still fought the structure. So even though you superficially can have structure in your life or what you think is moving towards your highest value, the thing that's moving towards your highest value, whatever that is for you, right? If it's um, family, maybe you're creating things that allow you to bring, bring your family closer together. You know, family's your number one value. If God's your number one value, great. Or do you have practices in place that help support that? Whatever that is for you, everybody has different core values, right? And, you know, we have so many and they change throughout our life, they do. 
uh, as we change and evolve, because as you know, we do, <laughs> right? And um, sometimes we change a lot based on a specific instant in time, a moment in time. I'm gonna share that moment in time with you today that rocked my world. And we'll see how much I share. <laughs> so again, you know me better than that. All right, so here's what's going on. In, in a nutshell, what's going on to, with me is that there's a new identity evolving in many ways. It's an up level of being. I've talked about it a bit, right? A bit. And I'm being called. I don't believe by me. I believe by my higher power to play at a higher level. I feel like I was confined in a little amazing sandbox. I loved my sandbox. sandbox. I loved it. I loved it. It was great. You know, my clients love me still. They're still my clients. They're not, they're staying with me. They're here, you know, everything's good. And there's another sandbox that's bigger as well. And more, with more people who need to be served in addition to them, right? And so what hap what's happening is like my identity is shifting and evolving and I'm being called to play at a higher level. Maybe you feel like you've experienced this at some point in your life in the past or perhaps even right now and you don't know how to manifest it specifically yet. And that's okay, because I didn't know that either. It came upon me and it continued to evolve and unravel and it's still unraveling and it's still unravel and un whatever the word is, right? It's unraveling now. And you know, there's a lot of things in my life, roles are changing, relationships are changing. And so when all of these things change, partnerships, relationships, team, identity oh like there's a massive shift in identity right and then put us in this quarantine bubble right whatever that you know what this thing is right <laughs> it's actually a gift and um i i, I had to re-decide that today that it was a gift i had to re-decide it because i had forgotten that it was a gift for me and i started to feel the pain in it for a moment and so I had to, um, I had to redefine and for myself and decide again that it was a gift, this quarantine. And so, you know, in order to welcome in the new, you have to surrender the old to make room for the new. And if not, there's no room for new because all we have is the space that occupies the old. So, if you choose to hold on to patterns in your life, right? And let me explain what that means in just a moment. The patterns will only resurface again. And I'll give you a couple of examples of where this could make sense. So for example, maybe you, now I'm not speaking about me, I'm speaking about you, <laughs> potentially you. Uh, maybe you have experienced a certain type of relationship in the past. It didn't just seem to happen once. It's like, oh my God, how do I keep attracting this type of person into my life over and over and over again? Maybe it's that. The pattern didn't change yet, right? So you keep reliving that. Perhaps there's something that keeps happening, like you get this far right up to the edge of success, or just about to break through that ceiling. But every time you get there, it's like, Man, I just get knocked down. And that could be you too. And whatever that thing is for you, the pattern that may be, may be emerging is it's a pattern, right? For most of us. And the pattern will not stop until first we recognize that their pattern exists, that uh, the projection exists. So what i didn't plan to go into this entirely so the projection what you're putting out there is what you're getting back right so let's just call it a pattern for now and so with me it all began with a migraine the other day you heard me talking about it it was a migraine and it, i woke up i was hopping on a meeting and it began with a migraine a horrible migraine the worst migraine of my life ever it had been a couple years since i'd had a migraine and it was not good. It was not good at all. It was uh, symptoms of stroke. Y'all are safe from this, by the way. Totally safe, totally clear, totally healthy and whole. But for me, I was having very bizarre symptoms that I 
have never had yet in my life when it comes to a migraine. And I quite frankly thought I'd moved through them because of how I've been using my subconscious mind. As soon as it came up to nip it in the bud, boom, worked with my subconscious mind to begin the healing process in that moment. Oh, sweet. Crush that one, right? Literally like gone. It's gone. Thank you, subconscious mind. However, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, I didn't take advantage of that window, okay? And I believe it was for a purpose. I let the window go too long and whatever it was, it was. And so here's what happened. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead back and listen to the previous episode if you want to hear that one. Um, but right now, for the purposes of moving the story forward and really getting you to understand how all of these things really matter and apply to you so you can begin to work with your subconscious mind to get out of, you know, to release the past really. And, all of the things that maybe you may be experiencing and feeling right now as well that are surfacing because of your past and surfacing right now more than ever into your present. And so as this migraine, it started and ended, the next morning I wake up, you know, it's like it was a whole day ordeal, whole day, whole, whole night, wake up and I was like, wow, I feel great. I feel really, really, really good, subtle, barely at all from what I was used to in the past, residual. And I remember saying this to my friend and he said, um, well, I'd encourage you to think of this differently. What do you mean? Because in my eyes, it was the perfect quote unquote storm. All of the elements were there. All of the things, right, were there. Meaning that led to this um, you know, low grade stress headache and all of this stuff, right? It was all there. And he said, well, could it be perhaps that you're not feeling the residual that you're used to feeling in the past when it comes to migraine because you were simply processing some things and that's what all your migraine was. And I thought, I heard it, I let it go. I heard it one in one ear and out the, kind of in one ear and out the other, you know? like." It didn't feel like it stuck to me. You know, when you hear something, you're like, ooh, that just stuck to me, right? It didn't quite stick to me because I just couldn't get it yet. It wasn't my time yet to get that, okay? And so that was fine. So the rest of the day was great. That was yesterday. Everything was really, really, really good. Um, and then I slept really, really deep last night. And Here's one thing that I want you to know about when you sleep. What happens in your sleep is that you process things in your sleep. Your subconscious mind is always working, okay? You may be consciously asleep, yet your subconscious mind is, is working, right? So right when your conscious mind starts stepping to the side, right before you go to bed, your subconscious mind actually gets, takes over. It keeps your body running. It keeps, you know, literally holds the blueprint to your body, how to keep your heart beating, your blood moving through your body, all of that stuff that happens in your body, your breath going, um, keeps all of it, you know, you can react in the middle of the night because you will wake up, your subconscious mind will alert you and wake you up if there was an emergency, of course, you're all safe from that. So you want to know that your subconscious mind's always working in the background. You don't just shut off, right? <laughs> like you don't just shut off. And, and so when you are sleeping, what happens is you are also processing things in your sleep. This is why what you listen to prior to bed is so important because what you listen to really is what you often, it's the last thing you take in right before you go into a deep sleep, a delta state, right? And so that's the thing in your mind. So it's very important to be mindful of right before bed and right in the morning time. This is where when we talk about doing the habits and the power rituals that I teach about that you know, there's positioning of those things matters and how you do it matters, right? Depending on what the power ritual specifically is. Anything working with the subconscious mind, you really want to maybe try and align it with those hours. Now, slightly digressed. So your subconscious mind processes in your sleep. And when I woke up today, I woke up in my eyes, total chaos right? From having had a great night's sleep and, you know, a great, good day yesterday, post migraine. I woke up in total chaos. Now I'm hoping my assistant does not hear this <laughs> for a few days, that she stays resting. And, you know, so she, she's, my assistant's out. She's amazing. And she's out sick. 
she's allowed to be, okay? She's allowed to be, and she's fine, by the way. She's gonna be fine. And um, so this was day two of her being sick. So my mind starts to make meaning of what it means, and not just that, a lot of other things that were in my head because of the whole day I lost the day before, and you know, just all the stuff, right? So I start going crazy. I woke up in chaos, my mind was going crazy, and one thing I, I realize is that not everyone's urgency is my emergency, okay? Maybe this makes sense for you. When you start to believe that everyone's urgency is your emergency, you then react. And that's the worst way to be. You've got, because you're then reactive as opposed to controlling and being in control of um, at the power of your day, right? And, and being in, owning your power, right? Like you own your power, you own your day. It's all part of just being the boss that you are, boss in every way. So not everyone's urgency is my emergency. And I began to realize that, but I couldn't quite help the feelings of excitedness, aka not so much, right? Like uh, it, it wasn't quite excited at the time. It was actually feelings of anxiety that were surfacing me because there was all these things in my mind that I had to do, right? Your mind is a meaning making machine. It will continue to make meaning and make connections of all the things that you think you have to do and what that means to you in your life. And so what happens is we've got a lot of these open, what people call loose ends, I call open loops, okay? A lot of open loops, a lot of open loops, right? Like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, and this, 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 this. Maybe you have some of those of your own. And so when you, um, so again, when you're, when you're called to play a bigger game in a much larger playing field, you are forced to up-level your life. You're forced to up-level your life in every way. So that thing that you didn't pay attention to before, your crutch becomes your Achilles heel. It won't go away. It can't go away or you won't be allowed to level up. You're forced to address the thing in order to play at a new game, to play at a new level. And I started to recognize this about a, a little over a month ago, and maybe even longer ago. Actually, I recognized it months ago. And it's been an evolutionary process. And of course, I didn't control all of this from happening or from whatever it is, starting, happening, continuing. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't create it, right? So it's been an evolution. So we let go of things in our sleep. We stir things up often in our sleep. And, you know, and it's not even always in our sleep. So your unconscious mind makes what's unconscious to you conscious so that it can get resolved. It brings the thing that's deep and suppressed within you up. Like it, you know, like, like a shit storm. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I feel like something's going on. Like, I don't know what it is. Well, that's often the thing that's in you that's been buried and deep and you've repressed it. See, one of your unconscious mind's job is to suppress memory and memories of the past that don't really serve you right now, right? So it just keeps them there. They're all there. They're just kind of at bay as well as, you know, it, it also holds all your memories. So anything that you think, you know, the other day I was having a hard time thinking of a memory of something and, you know, it's there. I know it's there. I just have to allow my subconscious mind to go back and get it. And, um, and that's what your subconscious mind does, one of the many things that it does. So um, your subconscious mind will bring things up to your, bring things forward that are ready to be resolved. And it often appears, I call it the illusion, the illusion. That's, you know, just something that I've been calling it for years um, it, that I got from somebody, one of my old coaches the illusion, right? It's like the illusion appears. It appears that like there's a shit storm. It appears like things are getting really crazy. It appears like there's a tornado. It appears like all of these things are happening and that you can really create reality out of them, right? Like it feels so real, it feels so real. And the reality is, is that it's oftentimes not quite real. It's real enough for you to deal with it, right? But we make our reality. And that's another podcast episode, another 1% life show. So the, um, the thing that's unconscious, again, comes up and you're ready to deal with it. And it can happen over a couple of days. It can happen over a couple of weeks. It can happen over a longer period of time. And sometimes it can happen like that. 
And so this was a process for me. It was happening, right? I, again, I'm playing in different, in different fields. I have new relationships and partnerships and things brewing in my life and my business and all over. And so things are morphing right? And when you're called to play at a higher level, you're called to grow. Now you can take that call and seize it, or you can drop it and let it go. The choice is yours. So today when I was feeling all of this anxiety, and I knew it was just me, like it was, you know, I have my team, I'm just kidding, but like, you know, my right arm, my assistant, my amazing, you know, assistant was not there with me today. And it felt a little abandoned today, to be honest. Like we've got a great team, don't get me wrong. But like my assistant who does everything for me was not there today. And, and so I started kind of going into this panic thing and I walked the dog and I was like, man, this thing keeps, and y'all are safe from this, by the way, totally safe. Um, it kept getting worse. And what I started to do was I started to judge myself again you're not going to be one of those people. Oh, like one of those people are bad, right? You're not going to be a person who gets anxiety. Attack. You know how to deal with your stuff, right? Like, you know this, Joni. And the pattern was real. Like it had been happening over the last couple of days. If you've been following the show. And so I knew that there were things I had to handle, big to-dos on the task list today to get done and a lot. And they're still, still going, right? And so I came in, you know, I fed the dog, did all the stuff, drank my cacao, meditated a lot. And <laughs> hopefully you're beginning your two minutes of breathing practices, practice from, or meditation, whatever you'd like to call it from yesterday's episode. And I then began a workout to distract myself from all that I had to do. Worked out, okay? And all of a sudden, I sat to do my first big task that I did not want to do, you guys. I did not want to do. I was like, you know that whole structure creates freedom thing? Well, consciously, I knew it, that when I did this, it would create the freedom, but my unconscious mind was like, oh no, run away from that. You do not want to do that. You do not want to do that. That is not what you want to do. There is no freedom in that at all, right? So I embraced it. I sat down, I got off my book, um, you know, I started brain dumping. Okay. Literally, uh, this page actually says brain dump all my open loops, all the things that were open. Okay. And just watch what comes out of this. I mean, listen, <laughs> and, um, all these open loops that start, that were just open things that were unresolved in my mind, anything that was in my head, I just got it out onto paper. I recommend that you do this here's the thing. I actually had a friend ask me a couple days ago because I was going through this a few days ago and he said, Hey, would you like to just brain dump all that out? I know how to do the thing. And I said, no, I don't want to brain dump it out. <laughs> Apparently I wanted to hold. And he literally said, okay, great. You can hold on to it then. You can choose to hold on to it then. And I chose you guys, I was choosing to hold on to it. I was literally choosing to hold on to it because I know how to do the activity, right? I know how to do the, t the technique to release. And it's very freeing. It's very releasing. This wasn't the thing. Like this was the beginning of the thing. And so I start writing all these things down and then I start um, going through and line iteming them. All right. And if you have a to-do list to do, maybe you want to take this, this recommendation of, you know, what I do. And I went and I put a ones by everything that would take five minutes or less a one right? Like meaning five minutes or less is what an A1 means right next to it. A1, A1, A1. Felt like, you know, a lot of A1s. So I was like, that's pretty cool. Anything that could take five minutes or less, you do right away. You just do. I mean, after you make your list, of course, and sort it and all that stuff. A2s, um, <laughs> I'm looking at some of my A2s. Um, A2s are not quite, uh, five minutes, right? So they're, they're urgent though, right? They're urgent, um, but it'll take longer than five minutes. So you schedule those. You literally schedule them in your phone. And your Bs, I only do A1 and A2s personally for As. And for Bs, you can't, maybe you can figure out a way to. Um, Bs are just a few days out, right? They're a few days, they're at least a few days out, maybe a little bit longer. And you schedule those as well in your calendar. C's are like way out in the future, but they're the thing that you're thinking about like six months from now that you want to do or should do or maybe need to do. That thing, you either schedule it 
excuse me, <laughs> I think I just like half burped and, you know, um, hiccuped at the same time, right? <laughs> so, excuse me, I, uh, you schedule it or dump them, right? Like literally get rid of them. So um, you schedule it or dump them. And those are the three things or the four things that you do. So if it's now, you do it now, urgent. Um, but if it's going to take longer, you schedule than five minutes, you schedule it for an A2B. Um, and it, if you're listening in the comments, feel free to write this down so everybody can see it as well. B, at least a few days out, schedule it. Your C's, if they're way far out in the future, schedule them or dump them. Schedule or dump. Schedule or dump. That's it. I know. Caitlin's laughing at me. And, um, and so then all this stuff started coming up, right? Like it's kind of coming up right now. Like all oh, this stuff started coming up. And I was like, again, really anxiety, anxious filled. And I was like, oh my God, my next time. I'm like, dang it. Like what's going on? So I started doing this thing. I started tapping, right? Like tapping. I don't know if you know what tapping is. It's called EFT, emotional freedom technique. So I trusted my unconscious mind because when you're feeling something, you want to listen to the thing that you're feeling. Awareness is crucial. It's critical to be moving, to move through something. And I call it the alarm, alarm principle. We're, we're going to leave the whole thing for another day. But the first step in the alarm model is awareness, right? And it's ask slash awareness, right? So you got to ask the question to get aware. And, and so that's what I did. And so when I, I was like, what do I need to do? I just got, meaning I intuited that I needed to tap. And so when you tap, my point is not to really show you how to do this right now, specifically, um, it, you tap certain meridians, right? It's called emotional freedom technique and they're right here. And so I'm, I, I was talking about the thing that I was feeling anxious about, anxiety about, and talking about it out loud and like, oh my gosh, I, you know, even, you know, even though I'm feeling all this anxiety, right, you can look it up on YouTube. We can also do another session on it if you're interested at some point. And I'm tapping here, 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 I'm tapping here under my arm. I'm tapping, oh, I should probably give descriptions for those listening on the podcast, tapping on top of my head. So right at the, the, the corner of, um, what do you call this? of your inner eye above like where your brow is with two fingers, your first two or, um, or some people do the middle two fingers right there, kind of at an angle slightly right on your brow. And then right over here at the corner of your eye, the same side, just pick a side, um, the right side with two fingers, you just kind of tap lightly. You don't like, you know, dig them in just with your pads or your fingers, just tap, tap, tap. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. And then under your eye, a little bit and you tap under your your nose or your and above your lip right under your nose above your lip you tap there and this really does a, lot, a couple things number one um, if you're feeling anxiety it begins to release the anxiety so you're interrupting the brain signal that's happening right your pattern interrupting what's happening um, neurologically in your body right your pattern interrupting it and um, you know, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of science to this right now that we're not going to get into. And then there's like this spot, right, like kind of your collarbone area, um, right where your about where your collarbone is. Uh, it's kind of like right underneath your collarbone on one of your sides. You can do both sides if you want. I just kind of do it with four fingers, so you kind of get all of it. And then under your arm, right under your armpit, you know, with four fingers. And then you tap the top of your head. And so this is actually really good to do with children as well if they're going through something emotional or something. So the thing doesn't actually install at a subconscious level, like get deep rooted, okay? And so I started doing this, but I, as I was doing it, I was saying words out loud. And the words that I was saying out loud were different things like, um, um, you know, like even though I'm feeling, you usually start here at doing a little karate chop with your four fingers on one of the bottoms of your hands, right? Like um, where your pinky meets your wrist kind of thing, that little flat area from your base of your pinky to the base of your palm on the side, like karate chop side. And you just hit it with your other hand, four fingers, even though I'm feeling so much anxiety right now, so much anxiety right now, I still love and accept myself anyway even though I'm feeling so much anxiety right now and you keep doing this and then start tapping on the different things that I'm feeling, the different thoughts that were coming up, right? Again, there's a process to this. I trust that I'm led to go where I'm supposed to go. All of a sudden, guys, I kid you not, the most profound experience I've ever had with tapping in my life. Um, I check in, I always get a scale of one to 10 where I'm at 
you know, at the beginning and then midway through, and it's, it dropped pretty rapidly within a couple minutes down to a four. I'm like, this is bizarre. And then you get to start tapping good things that you want, right? The things that you actually want. And the things that started coming up for me were things like, I actually, like I started shifting from anxiety to identity and identity to actually being, you know, <laughs> the boss, the CEO that I am, and all of the stuff that I was rejecting when it comes to structure, creating freedom in my life, right? <laughs> Simple task of, come on, sometimes you just got to brain dump stuff out, right? To, you know, many more other things. And um, all of this stuff started coming out. Like, I'm actually really excited to do X, Y, and Z, right? Like, I'm actually really pumped to do this thing. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh my God, this is going to feel really good. It's really going to feel empowered to step into this new role and this new identity. And I kept tapping over and over through the loop and over and over and over and over and over again. You guys, listen, I know this is getting long and I appreciate you hanging in there for the point of this all. I get off of this. I was like, holy cow. Wow. I just had an incredible shift from on the verge of an anxiety attack to feeling absolutely empowered to owning my power to being able to tackle the tasks that I had. And first it was just the first task, right? That I had right in front of me immediately to do that was like, felt like a monster in the room. And then there was the next task that felt like a monster in the room because I don't do these things, right? My assistant does most of them. And, and so all of these things, again, we can make the monster in the room. It's never a monster in the room, right? I mean, I've yet to see the monster in the room. Maybe you have. So then I go upstairs. I'm like, man, I'm on fire. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do this thing. I get upstairs. This is where you trust your unconscious mind, okay? Because your unconscious mind is always, always, always sending you messages. And I walk in my bedroom and I got a message, right? You, I just knew, I just knew that I was supposed to pick up to wear this sweatshirt that I have on right now. It was under a chair back against the wall. I was like, okay, well, I'll grab that sweatshirt out. As I pulled this sweatshirt out, these earrings of wings that you can't maybe see came out. Now, for those of you who cannot see, my sweatshirt that I'm wearing. I'm wearing, it's the 1% well, the mastermind, Joni Dillon's the 1% mastermind with a phoenix, a picture of the, the phoenix rising, right? Very symbolic bird and um, or imagery and meaning to me, the phoenix rising out of the ashes. Think about this, okay? Rising up out of the ash, like the phoenix. And I haven't seen these earrings in weeks, in weeks, and they, fly out. I was intuited. I was told, I listened to what my unconscious mind said, the impulse that I got, right? When you, you hear something, you know something, you feel something, or you just believe you should do something, just do the thing. Just do the thing. Stop fighting it. We all fight enough, right? Well, I know I do. I'll speak for myself. And I grabbed it and these earrings flew out. They just flew out and they were wings. I kid you not. The moment I had decided today to adopt a brand new identity of me, to shed the old, let's just call it what it is, shit. Normally I say stuff, but we're just going to call it shit. To shed the old shit of the past and to literally this most profound experience happened while sitting here and I shifted and I decided to shift and I got excited about this new identity and this new role I was going to play in my life and in my business and in my relationships and how big it was uh, for me, right? For, it was huge. And, and as I move forward in, um, as I move forward, some of you realize I'm like struggling with getting these words out right now. <laughs> Because it's all so new. As I move forward in, um, in partnership, I realize in order for me to be my best me, I have to bring my best me. I have to bring my best me. And that means I have to shed the old me that's no longer working for me. And that's exactly what happened. And I pulled 
a card. I also trusted to grab a card from my deck of cards. Give me one second, I'm gonna read it it's for you right here. Holy cow, and then I have to go do this thing <laughs> that's also very symbolic to me of freedom. And this card says this, I trust that the universe gives me exactly what I need at exactly the right time. Everything works out perfectly. This fell literally out of the, de the deck when I opened it. It literally fell, flew out. There was no me picking it. It picked me. Okay, what a beautiful, what a beautiful, you know, sign from the universe. And, you know, today's also a very special day for me. It's a little bit more of a share than I want to share right now. I mean, I'd be comfortable sharing it. I think other people aren't comfortable with me sharing it. So I'm not quite going to share it yet. You might be able to guess. <laughs> but uh, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to do something really kind of big for me, really kind of big for me right now. Like I'm literally got to go because the place is going to close and there's like 55 minutes to get there and it's not close and I got to get out of here and go do that. So um, yeah, it was just an awesome card. Um, and that thing that I'm doing for me represents, I'm looking at the word freedom right now, literally it's written on a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> happens to be my Chase Freedom bill I was paying today. And it just happens, you know, it's there for a reason. I, I, that's strange. And, um, and this thing that I'm getting today, it's a really big deal for me. It, it like, it was me getting out of my comfort zone. It was me breaking through stuff and, and uh, up leveling in a big way and changing meaning of things that I've had towards things. And um, it represents freedom to me it really represents freedom to me. And um, it's a really big thing. And I, I may be talking about it in the next couple weeks um, or months ahead. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. So it, it doesn't even rep represent freedom to me. I think it represents freedom to a lot of people in the country and maybe even the world. So I'm really excited about that. And it all, all, all happened on the same divine, day. Um, and so here's, and then I'm going to leave with my three supplements that I meant to share with you on yesterday's episode on how to deal, you know, with some, some things that you can take for anxiety and to help you feel good. Um, but tapping really powerful tool, emotional freedom technique, super powerful. Use it, trust your subconscious mind. When you want to, when your past, when you realize your past is dragging with you into the present, it will only continue to go with you into the future. You will not change it unless you decide to let go of it, unless you decide to cut the cord of Mar Marcia, you'll hear the thing. Don't worry, you're in my mastermind. You'll hear the thing. Don't worry. <laughs> Just keep it between us, <laughs> amongst us. Um, you got to cut the cord. They're, they're poking and prodding me for the thing that I'm leaving them hanging about. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful right to have that thing. And, um, and so, yeah, you, you cut the cord. You got to cut the cord. Cut the cord, the energetic cord between you and your past that has held you down. Cut the energetic cord between you and that former identity that was meant to play at a certain level. Cut the I cord, the, the energetic cord from you and the thing, you and the person that has held you back in your freaking life. Cut the cord to whatever it is, that, that false identity that you have somehow or someone else has given you that you've adopted and owned and, and felt at some point served you. It did serve you at some point. It got you to where you are and it no longer serves you now. Rockstar, know that it is up to you to decide when you're ready to cut the cord and to completely completely, completely just let go. I hope you enjoyed this episode of, oh my God, I almost forgot to do it again. I'm going to share my, um, <laughs> yes, Marcia, it is a beautiful right. Yes, it is beautiful, right? Um, okay, so rock stars. Can you see me glowing? Like, look at the wings on my ears, these beautiful gold wing earrings that I haven't seen in weeks with the phoenix bird, like, and dog hair all over me. It's all good. <laughs> I don't care. Um, but check it out. So listen, before I end this and, and get on the road, um, 
I am going to share with you a couple of my, for those of you watching the live here on the Facebooks or on YouTube, the replay, um, it's all good. I'm going to make sure that you understand what these things are. We'll put them in the show notes as well. And the first thing is every night, it's, it's pretty much close to every night of the week these days. This is like my go-to, my... Mm, it just makes me feel comforted. It brings me down from a sympathetic state, like more of a little kind of alert, not like soup, not always in a sympathetic state, right? But like into a more calm rest and recover state, right? Into parasympathetic state. And it is this Organifi turmeric and reishi infused gold. And a powder of this, this, this stuff is just awesome. So it's, it's kind of sweet. Like you think, oh, turmeric, it's not going to taste good. It's really actually delicious. It's sweet. And it has like a coconut taste to it. So um, certified organic vanilla flavor. Um, it's got a couple different things in it. Turmeric, lemon balm, um, turkey tail mushrooms, magnesium to help you relax before bed. And um, the reishi also helps you. I think it had reishi in here, did it not? Yeah, reishi infused mushrooms help you to, um, you know, just take the edge off and relax. Like I also take a dropper of um, Finlandic mushrooms, tincture um, of reishi mushrooms as well. But this with, 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 um, I pop open a can of coconut milk, pour just a little bit in, depending on how much you want heat this up first in some water, like hot water, almost boiling, not quite, however you like it. Pour a scoop of this in, pour in a little bit of coconut milk if you like it. Again, you don't have to use that. If you don't like coconut milk, you might not even taste it in here, to be honest. And then what I do is, yes, 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 from um, exactly, Drew Manning, right? Yep, um, full spectrum hemp oil. Uh, this is, I put a little bit, well, I haven't used this one yet. This is a like a heavier dosage of it. And um, yeah, so, so this is CBD oil, right? I think we can talk about that stuff these days. Probably should find out. Um, but anyways, and I just put a couple, you know, a little bit of that into this thing, right? Into my mug. And, um, and then I drink it before bed and it's like amazing. And I sleep so good. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you, the other thing I wanted to share with you is this product, which doesn't come in a jar looking like this. This is my like nifty, you know, OMG, I got to go. So um, L-theanine, L-theanine, amino acid, uh, cannoli. Thank you, Drew Cannoli. Jeez, did I say Drew Manning? Wrong guy. Um, yes, Drew Cannoli. And I uh, was thinking fit to fat to fit guy. No, it's not him. <laughs> um, anyway, or maybe it is. I'm getting them all confused. Anyway, Drew Cannoli is who it is. So L-theanine, this stuff in a little bit of water, I don't know, you, I'm not gonna tell you how much to put, you're gonna figure that out by the package. You can go to Amazon bulk supplements and get the bulk supplements one, it's like orange, it's like the Amazon, I think it's the Amazon one, it's just called bulk supplements. It's, the, it, it's good quality stuff, I just put it in a jar and this in some water, you don't even taste it, can't taste it at all. I take a little whisker, coffee whisker, so it's L-theanine in some water, um, just about a little bit, not a lot, however much you need and um, drink it up in about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. Just the edge is off, you're feeling good, and it's just really nice. So yes, L-theanine, and uh, L-theanine, like nine, theanine, could be theanine, I don't know. And uh, by the way, consult with your physicians and your doctors and all of that stuff before this. I am not giving you any medical advice. This podcast is not, you know, assume any responsibility for anything that you do or do not do. So just make sure you talk to your doctor about taking anything like that. I think we'll probably have to get some official little thing like that as I start doing more biohacking stuff on the podcast. Um, all right, guys, I got a jet, got to get on the road. You guys are incredible. You're amazing. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this episode of the 1% Life Show, please do me a favor, share this out, tag somebody in it, share it out. However you share it, share, please share. And um, sharing is caring, as they say. And it certainly helps us to, to grow and to be able to continue to put content out like this for you and for me to show up here for you five days a week. And um, I promise no more migraines. So just health and 
all that was worked through. So thank you for listening to me. Hopefully you got some value out of it. Take a screenshot of this episode, wherever you're listening to it, tag me on Instagram or on Facebook on Instagram at Joni Dillon, J-O-A-N-I-E-D-H-I-L-L-O-N, silent H or on Facebook and uh, super excited to see you wherever you are on uh, social media. And until next time, rock stars, get out there and change some lives today. Start with your own first. You guys are amazing. Get out there and be unstoppable. Peace. Bye everyone.